Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Friday, January 10th. Podcast is a little bit late today. I do apologize for that. The good news is, good and bad, right? Good and bad. Uh, the good news is, in the past, my hangups uh, about getting the podcast out on time have been sort of these mental <laughs> mental lapses in recording and re-recording and uh, and all that good stuff. Today, I just I, I wanted to integrate a portion. We're going to do this Super Bowl pool. We're going to do a Super Bowl box pool with Team Ordinary, and uh, I'm going to get that done. I promised some of you guys that I would explain to you what a Super Bowl box pool is because a lot of you guys didn't know, and uh, I wanted to integrate that with the podcast. And uh, my I think my my technical chops are just uh, I, I haven't done the integration like that. In, uh, in a few weeks, a few months, actually. So uh, I'm a little bit, I, I didn't record it right, and it was hard to get the stuff together. Excuses, excuses, we know. Uh, the, but the bottom line was, I was trying to be productive. <laughs> in my attempt to be productive, uh, the podcast was delayed a little bit, and now I'm re-recording it. Not, it wasn't any mental lapse or anything like that. So I, I'm going to take this as a positive moving forward. It's all positive in 2020. And that's what we're what we're looking at. So today is Friday, January 10th, and I do want to check in with you guys today. Uh, I want to check in with your resolutions, with your New Year's resolutions. With now, I I know, I know. You're like Scott. Don't beat a dead horse. You've been talking about resolutions for the last three weeks. I I was kind of hoping by now we'd be over it and moving on into 2020, but. Uh, there's something that goes on right around this time of year and I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it, this is something I'm making up, (laughs) I think, you know, copyright me right now. Uh, the rule of two weeks is what I'm calling it. The rule of two weeks. Now there's two kinds of people at resolution time, right? There's two kinds of people, two dogs in this fight. I shouldn't say that, but (laughs) there's two dogs in this fight. And the one, one side is the people it's called the one side is the people that go to the gym every single day. They've been going to the gym for years on a regular schedule that they have. They know exactly, you know, they, they're in the same place at the same time. They like everything in order and they hate this time of year because the first two weeks of January, all the resolution people show up at the gym. I can't get on the machine that I want because someone else is there and they don't know how to use it right and they don't know what they're doing and they get in the way. But don't worry, in two weeks, they're going to be gone. Two weeks. And it's always a magical two weeks. And what makes t- two weeks kind of sounds random. Am I wrong? It's kind of like a random time frame. Like maybe one week would be more, you know, maybe a month. But no, it's always two weeks when people tell that story. And so on the other hand, we have... Are the people, the other people in this fight are the people that have made the resolutions, the people, you know, the people that are in the way of the first group. There's the first group that, that, that are annoyed by the second group. And then there's the second group who annoy the first group. Now, what is it about this two week period? I I don't know. What's the magic behind it? I don't know. My thought is this. My thought is, you know, you guys want to make some changes. You want to do the right thing. You want to be pro- more productive in your life. You make change, whether it's the gym or whether it's any kind of other personal thing that you've you've decided that you need to change or you want to change. And at this point in time, you are trying to make it your routine. You are trying to form the good habits that will lead to success to do the things that you want to do. But something is standing in your way. And at this point, we're right at the cusp of making it a good, a forming good habits or falling back into old bad ones. And the worst part is, is you've made yourself such a promise at this New Year resolution thing. And this is why everyone says everyone gets mad at New Year's resolution people is because the resolutions fail. And today is January 10th. We are 10 days in and you're four days away, four days away from being able to hang on to those, those, and I know, like I hear, I hear people, oh, it takes 30 days to form a habit. That's arbitrary too. No one really knows. It takes you to form a habit. It takes me some time. And then not only that, but not only does it take me some time, but then I can lose it just like that. I mean, I, this happened to me last year, right? I wanted to put out a podcast today. I woke up at like five, five thirty in the morning. I did the podcast and for the first couple of weeks, it was hard, really, really hard. And after a while, it just became, that's what I did. 
And I liked myself as that person. And then after I finished Iron Man, things kind of went downhill. But the fact of the matter was, it took me some time to kind of make sure that I developed that as a good habit, a good uh, a good discipline for me, getting up early in the morning. I liked myself was when I was that person, and that's what I did every day. And, and you know, maybe going to the gym has been your uh, resolution. And maybe you're kind of on that cusp, and you've gone a couple days in a row, and now one thing happened that's bad, you know? Uh, Your kid got sick and you had to stay home. Um, You know, maybe you said, hey, I'm going to go to the gym every day at six o'clock. So you get home from work at five, you cook dinner, you eat dinner, you go to the gym and you realize, man, it really sucks to work out on a full stomach. Or maybe you lifted those first few days and you know those first few days when you lift and you haven't done it in a while and you start moving your arms and you're in the shower and you raise your arm and you try to like wash under your armpit and you can't move your arm to do it because you're so sore. And well, hell, I ain't going back to the gym because now I'm too sore. Now is that time. And this is what happened. There's a reason why all these gym people say it takes two weeks, right? And I'm sorry, gym people, because now I'm going to, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is keep those people, those resolution people going to the gym. And you know what? You, in your heart of hearts, you know that you want them to, too. You want everyone to succeed. It's annoying that they're in your way for now, but you want them to succeed. You, in the end, you want them to succeed, but I get it. I know you're annoyed. Everyone's a creature of habit, but in, in your heart, you want them to succeed. Admit it. Admit it. I want you to succeed, all right? Don't give up. There's a reason why you wanted to do this in the first place. Find that reason. Hold on to that reason. Hold on to that discipline. Form those good habits and don't give up on them because you had a bad day or because things don't feel right right now. Don't, Don't give up on it. Just, I, I don't know. I feel like today, this is in the podcast and the scope of things, the 10th day of the year, we're going into the weekend uh, don't lose those disciplines that you've, you know, those, those good habits, those routines that you wanted to get into. Don't lose them. You can modify them if you must, and you can modify them. And, and sometimes it's really good to modify. Like this, the example of going to dinner, maybe what you can do is you go, instead of going home, you go right to the gym, you get the workout and you come home at six and then you, you make dinner then, you know? I mean, I, I, this is, I, I say that because I, I cook dinner here and it's what I have to consider. And sometimes what I do is I cook dinner. I let everyone else eat. I go work out and I come, I come back up, up and I eat cold dinner. That's what you got to do. It's what you got to do. You know, you have to put, you have to, you have to prioritize things and you have to move things around and shift things around until you can form those good habits. And until, until those habits become disciplined, become things that you just don't even think of. You just do. Don't give up. There's a reason for this whole rule of two weeks. Everyone says, oh, the first two weeks of January suck because everyone's in the gym. Don't be that person that just showed up for two weeks and doesn't go back. Hang on to it. Uh, And I just, I really, I don't know. I felt like I needed to say that today. I feel like this is kind of like that time where people have made the resolutions. They've kind of like waded into that arena of this is exercise. This is discipline. This is the, and now it's put up or shut up. Are you going to keep doing it? Or are you going to just let it fall to the wayside and go back to the old habits and bad habits? And for some of you guys, that means not even approaching this topic again until next year, which is not cool, which is not cool. It is okay to do self-evaluation often, more often than once a year. I only say I like resolutions because I think, I think that a lot of people don't do it at all for years and years and years, and, and you should do it a little bit more than you do. And uh, I know I have to do it more often. Um, I've been pretty good in my resolutions. You know, I had two and we'll go over them right now. Um, The two resolutions that I had, number one was to get up early, get up early. And I have been crushing that nine days in a row. I I, look, I don't, I didn't, when I start a resolution, I don't start Jan one. That's a recipe for, for disaster. Starting Jan one, you start Jan two. Everyone's up till midnight on New Year's Eve. Everyone's having a little too much, you know, uh, too much celebrating. You start Jan 1 and you fail, and, and that's a recipe for disaster. You start Jan 2. Give yourself a break. So I started Jan 2, 6 a.m. I was on that bike. We're doing meetups on Zwift. And I know I'm talking a lot about Zwift lately, guys. I know. But it's a tool that I use to keep me in shape, to keep me working hard, to keep me disciplined, and it's been working. And they don't pay me a dime. Uh, I should get on that, actually. I, don't, I should probably ask them to give me a dime. Um, I talk about them enough. But... It's a nice social space for me to get on and get my workout in. And you know what? Biking and cycling is a super awesome uh, cross-training sport for for running. So even though I know, you know that we promote this channel as more of a running network than a, a cycling network, 
And, uh, and I do feel bad that I'm giving some of you a little fear of missing out with this cycling thing. And, and I know some of you guys don't even cycle and you're, you're thinking about, Hey, maybe I should get on that Zwift thing. Maybe I should start meeting these guys for some runs. It's a very, it's an investment. It's an investment. You got to make sure that you like doing it before you go ahead and, and put down that kind of cash to get a bike and to get all the stuff that you need. But, um, the Zwift thing with the Zwift meetups, it has been holding me accountable. Uh, like you wouldn't believe. So 6 a.m., I set up a meetup. Almost every day I've done it. Well, every day I have done it. And I invite a few people. And Erin Shepard showed up one day. She might show up another. She's training for 70.3. We had Matt Shore show up the first day, uh, although he works and he's not, he's unable to make it there every day. But he, he you know, if he can, he will. And, uh, but the guy who has been holding me accountable every single day is Jacob Polzin, uh, who, I, who I have to thank. And I hope, I, I hope I'm doing the same thing for you to a certain extent. I just know, look, I set the alarm this morning. I set the alarm the last few weeks. I set two alarms. I set 521 and I set 530. And, uh, and the reason I, that, that I have that as a nine, that's the, uh, international acceptable snooze time that nine minutes. I wasn't, I don't know how we decided that nine minutes was the perfect snooze. I wasn't invited to that meeting. I didn't vote in that, <laughs> but somewhere someone decided that decided that nine minutes was the appropriate snooze time. And you know, it's okay for me. It works for me. I think I'd rather like 11, 12 uh, cause I feel like that nine minutes, as soon as I hit that button, I'm like counting down in my head and I need a little bit more time to actually try to get back to sleep so that I can then wake up again 12 minutes later, but nine minutes. All right. I, I it is what it is. The adjust, someone should invent the adjustable snooze time. Don't you think? I think that, that, that would just be a great invention, but I'll accept the nine minutes for what it is. I set the 521 and the 530. The reason I do that is in case I wake up and I hit that snooze button and instead of hitting snooze, I turn it off that at least I'll get a legitimate alarm in nine minutes. I'll, it's kind of like a backup. That's how I use that. Uh, and I know I know other people have other techniques. I saw Angela Fillmore set <laughs> four alarms five minutes apart at like 4.30, 4.35, something like that, 4.40, 4.45. Um, that would drive me nuts, though, if I kept hitting snooze for every single one and you wind up, I don't know, you just have alarms buzzing all over the place. And by, I don't know, I guess you couldn't fall asleep then, but... Um, <laughs> everyone's got their own way to wake up in the morning i just have the two i set the two alarms nine minutes apart i nine minutes apart and i allow myself the one snooze 5 30 i get out of bed uh put the bike shorts on come downstairs set up the zwift get ready to go 6 a.m we meet whoever's there uh we meet and we ride and sometimes it's a short ride 20 minutes and sometimes it's been close to an hour it depends on the day depends on the speed depends i mean my legs some days my legs are like jelly from the night before, whatever workout I've done the day before, some days I just, you know, 6 a.m., you don't have no idea what your legs are going to feel like at 6 a.m. And uh, and for me, I get up at 6, and they're either, some days they're pretty fresh, and some days they are, they are shot. But it's all good because you get that workout in. You get that sweat going early in the morning. You get that motion going. Not only that, but you get out of that gym, you shower, and you are ready. You have energy for the day. Not, and you don't have to have that concern hanging over your head all day of, oh, I got to get back and do another workout. Oh, I got to get that second workout. Oh, I got to get... You've done a workout for the day. You've done one. Check the box. The next one is gravy. You know, and some days, yes, I really, really want to get those in, and I kind of really focus on them, and I make sure that I do get them in. But the days that I miss, they're less disastrous because I've already done one in the morning. And I tell you, I'm more productive during the day after I've gotten that workout in. Because if I have to do the podcast and then I got to do the workout on top of the podcast, they all kind of build and develop this giant ball of stress that gets only worse and worse during the day. I get up early. I'm more productive. I'm a better, like I said, I'm a better person when I wake up early in the morning. The second resolution has been I want to be more social with my workouts this year. I mean, we run the podcast, we run our groups, all that stuff. It can only be beneficial to me to reach out and help people. I'm a coach, all that stuff to reach out and, and work out with, uh, with people directly as opposed to just being on my own. Now, you know, one of the things that we did recently, Steph and I made a calendar of all these things that we wanted to do. We want to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. One of the things that we did was we set like a, a social media strategy calendar and just so we can make sure that we're kind of cross promoting all our stuff and doing all that great stuff. Marketing, I hate it. It must be done. Um, but one of the things that we put in there is we wanted to do like a weekly, what do we call it? Uh, engaging post, an engaging post. We want to engage with you. We must engage. Um, so yesterday I put up a question on my Twitter, which was, uh, you know, I used to like to work out on my own, but I'm starting to develop a more, you know, a desire to work out with people more, to be around people, 
what do you guys like doing? Do you like working out by yourself? Uh, or do you like working in a group? And I, number one, I was shocked at the responses. There was over 400 votes, probably like close to 450 votes that came in. Um, that's a lot for us. We don't get a lot of responses like that normally. So a simple question like that got a lot of responses, a bunch of comments, which are all great. And they were all, uh, adding to the conversation and to the, uh, you know, to the topic, it was all relevant and good. There was no fighting, which is always good. Um, but what really shocked me, what really shocked me was the results. The results were like something like 75% of you guys say you just work out alone versus 25% that said they'd rather work out in a group or with others. And that just shocks me because I feel like there's a lot, I, I always thought I was the, I was more of the outcast than, you know, I always thought people like to work out together. They like to run together. They like to be in groups. They, there's run groups, there's cycling groups. You know, I go out biking and it's usually it's just me. Sometimes it's me and like Laura Stebbins or me and Joe Canyon all at one time. Uh, sometimes I have a partner that I go with, but usually it's never more than a group. But when I go out, I see a group, I'll see like six or seven people riding together and you see that often so you figure i just figured that i'm kind of like out you know i'm the guy that's doing it on my own most people do it together apparently not and i feel like you know this is a huge like opportunity for a guy like myself and who has a podcast who has who's trying now to get people involved in zwift and all that stuff and and, and get together in our, our group rides um a they're fun <laughs> And B, look at all you guys out there that train by yourself and don't take advantage of that whole group dynamic. You know, just from my morning rides alone, I have learned that um, having that accountability factor, right? I got to be on that bike at 6 a.m. because there are people waiting for me. Having that accountability factor uh, is huge, is huge. It keeps you up, those keeps you getting up those mornings that you don't want to get up. You don't want to get out of bed. But you do it because other people are relying on you. Uh, again, thank you, Jacob Polzin, for being there, man. I, I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those things where some days, yeah, some days I get out of bed and I'm fine. I just stroll down. Today was one of those days I kind of was like, eh, got to do my workout. I didn't, I, I didn't think anyone was going. Jacob showed up today, though. He's, he's, he shows up even when he says he's not going to show up. The guy's insane. Um, so today I just got up and it was fine. But in, and there's been days in the past, in the past ten days. There's been days that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to get up. I don't want to go. Oh. And I kind of sit there for a couple minutes and uh, and then I'm like, oh, you know, I don't have an excuse. You know, if I don't show up, you know, at 6.15, I'm going to get a message from someone saying, hey, why didn't you show up? What's going on? What did you do? And I don't have an excuse. I don't, you know. This morning, I'm like, uh-huh, maybe I'll say the baby woke up or something, and I'll just say I can't, man. Like, I'm trying to make excuses in my head, but I didn't have one, so I got up and I did it. I just did it. And uh, it was good. It's been good. And I'm developing, it's it's becoming more solid. It's becoming a more, uh, you know, it's adding to the discipline. It's building the discipline. It's building the habit, the routine. Then I get up in the morning and I get that ride in. Even today, I had a meeting at 730. I had to get out of the house, uh, but we, we rode for like 25 minutes. It was great. It was perfect. It's perfect. It starts. It's the right start to the day. It's the right start to the day. Uh, and then we have our Thursday night ride. So our Thursday night ride now is 630 Eastern time. Any of you guys out there on Zwift, if you want to be involved or if you want to be involved in the 6am ride, call me, let me know, reach out to me, let me know. You just got to uh, friend me uh, or follow me on, on Zwift and I, and I can invite you, um, I can invite you to the ride. I can invite up to 50 people. I think I invited about 18 or 19 last time. Nine people showed up. So in week one, we had four people show up. And in week two, we had nine. And I got to tell you, some of those guys, some of you guys, you know each other from Twitter, you know each other. And it's like, all of a sudden, there we are riding together. It's practically like we're all there. We could all go have a beer after we're done. Uh, we didn't. But, you know, you could. I'm on Whole30. I can't have a beer. It's, it's terrible. Uh, it's funny. Like, Stephanie had rice the other day. And uh, that's not whole 30 because it's green. So she only made it to whole eight and I'm still doing it. I'm still hanging tough. But anyway, um, yeah, no beers after after Thursday night. Right? But nine people showed up. It was a great dynamic. We had, uh, you know, I, I think there are some there are some things that we have to iron out. You know, is it going to be a casual ride? Is it going to be a competitive ride? Are we going to mix it up and have it some casual, some competitive? I like the idea of all that stuff, you know, Um I, you know, there's going to be issues kind of moving forward, not issues, but things to iron out. And I think what we're going to do is I think we're just going to add more rides. We're going to have a casual ride. We're going to have a competitive ride. I think on, on weekends, maybe we'll do a long ride, 
you know, mileage wise, just a longer, uh, longer ride with more hills and all that good stuff. It's just a matter of time before we develop all this stuff and just get it in the right spots and figure out when people can make it. Nine people was a really good turnout, I think. And it just inspired me to just do more, do more and get more people together. That's why I'm saying, geez, 75% of you guys train on your, on your own. How do we change that? You know, I think of, this is another thing I think of is, um, you know, I, I've, I've struggled with discipline over the years. I've been training for five years. The times where I train on my own, when I'm successful is when I'm laser focused on a goal and I don't need, if anything, maybe training with another person might inhibit my progress because I'm just so fired up for that goal that it's just a one track mind. My entire life is about that goal and I go for it. The, my problems have been in, in between in between goals when I don't really have anything to shoot for and I got nothing, you know, and yeah, you know, there are things that there are reasons to do it for me and for my health and all that stuff. But for some reason it doesn't get me going all the time. But what I thought of was when I was younger and I played sports, baseball, football, basketball, whatever it was, um, I was disciplined. I made it to practice every single time in high school. We had practice five days a week. For football, we had games on weekends too. We had Saturday games. So you're talking about practice on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, game on Saturday. Six days a week, had to be there on time, had to be there for two hours at least and and get things done. And you had to do it to be there for your team. You had to do it if you wanted to play. You wanted to be respectful of the team, of the coaches. It was all about the responsibility and the dedication to be there. The discipline. And that got done. Now in this sport, you don't have that, right? I don't have a team to be beholden to, accountable to, you know? I don't have that. So what if we develop that? What if we develop, hey, you guys got to get here at this time, at this place. And if you can make it, that's great. That's awesome. That's what we're kind of hoping for. Uh, find a group. Find find something that you like to do, you know, and be beholden to it. Grab that discipline. Make it Make it a discipline if you can. Make it a good habit. Uh, you know, put it, make it part of your routine, make it, Hey, uh, you know, I, I, we did a podcast with Brian Burke last night and he's an, he's an ultra runner, an ultra marathoner. And the dude just rolls off races. Ah, you know, I dress up and go run a marathon. I did 50 miles the other day and I did. And like, this is for real, a conversation. And what, how do you do that? Well, I go to work every day and when I leave work, I go right to the trail. That's his routine. That's what makes him successful. And you know what? If you can't do it with other people, if you or if you can't do it by yourself, or you lose the discipline. Do it. Make yourself beholden to other people. Do it in a group. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like it, for me, it's like the discipline to go to practice is the same as the six a.m. wake up ride, right? It's like I'm going to meet other people. I am accountable to other people. Uh, it's my practice. It's good for me. I know it's good for me. I may not want to do it in the moment, uh, but I'm so much happier when I'm done with it. And that I've gotten it done and it's check the box and move on with the day. So much happier. It is, uh, I don't know. It's good for me. This is the way, I don't know. It's, it's sort of the way I'm branching out. Right. And I, on that note, um, I was watching something the other day and this is off topic, but I think it's relevant. Uh, Dave Chappelle won this comedy award. I forget what it's called, but it's like an annual comedy award for lifetime achievement or whatnot. Mark Twain Award, I think it's called. Anyway, he gave this speech. And in the speech, he 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 had a quote. It was a quote from Miles Davis. And if you've seen this, it's a little viral on, on, on YouTube. Maybe I'll put the link in. Um, he quoted Miles Davis. And Miles Davis once said, it took me years to learn how to play like myself, play an instrument. And Dave Chappelle kind of applied that to himself and how he does comedy. It took me years to learn how to play like myself. And... I get it, right? And and if you think about it, maybe maybe think about it, what he, what it means in the in in the music world or the comedy world. You can see how it easily applies. There's a certain framework to music. There's a certain framework to comedy. You watch other people do it as you grow up, as you and you, you want to do it. You love it. You embrace it. I want to be a musician. I want to be a comedian. And the way you learn is by watching people that have done it before. Right. That's the way you, I want to be, here's my influences, right? We always talk about influences, musicians, comedy. I hear my influences. I, so they watch what people did before and they grab on, you know, and they grab onto certain influences and they, and they copy, they might not copy verbatim the joke, you know, you know, obviously you can't do that. You can't, you can't 
Yeah, I mean, you'd be in court if you copyrighted everyone. But, you know, hey, this guy sounds like this guy. This guy, his jokes are kind of like, reminds me of this guy. That kind of thing. And eventually over time, you develop your own niche. You develop your own following, your own style that you own. It becomes you. And you're, you know, Miles Davis becomes Miles Davis and Dave Chappelle becomes Dave Chappelle. And it got me thinking that here I am and I'm doing this podcast now three years and I'm training for five years and I don't know if I know how to play like myself. I don't know. But man, this idea of getting people together has really kind of um, lit a fire, I guess. Maybe there's a little fire because it's just starting. You know, but getting people together on Zwift and getting us all uh, to ride together and getting all the people together on the discussion group, even just to have a chat and talk about running and talk about where we are in training, our goals and all that good stuff. Uh, Aaron Shepard posted t- something today introducing herself. I wish everyone would do that on our board. Uh, just amazing. And she's training for a 70.3 and she met us for one, one morning on the ride. It's so great to see. It's just so great to see that. Um and, you know, I've been sitting here and I, I don't know, this podcast has taken a lot of forms, right? I've taken sort of the bi- autobiographical or the bi- autobiographical form last year where I was training for Ironman and I was giving you guys the day-to-day and the up-to-date. Uh, you know, I've, t- I've done the form where I have guests on and I was on for year, the first year, all I ever did was have a guest on. That was my format every day, all the podcasts, it just was a guest, do an interview. That was good. And I think right now where we're morphing and where we're going, and you know, again, it took me years to learn how to play like myself. I think I'm getting it now. I'm getting it now. Because, you know, when you start out in the sport, you do have those desires to get those medals, to finish that first marathon, to finish that first Ironman, to do what you want to do. But sometimes it's not enough and you need more. And I think the way that you do it and the things that you draw upon are the people that are closest to you. And those people could be, you know, when I say closest, I don't mean necessarily my family, but closest to me in the running community and and the cycling community and triathlon and all that good stuff. The people that talk to me, some people talk to me on a daily basis. It's like, we, and it's not, it's so funny because there are people that I like that I talk to every month. There's people I talk to on a daily basis. They're, and just, they're all good. They're all good. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But the way this has kind of worked over the last couple of weeks and months is like, wow, we're really kind of getting together and doing things together as a team. And this whole team ordinary concept kind of got put together. And man, I, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving how it's interacting right now. I'm loving how we're getting together and doing rides together. Uh, and I love how we're talking together. Uh, everyone's talking. The, 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 the message board has, has never been as busy as it is these days over, ever since the year started. People I don't know. It's been great. Uh, we're up to like 1,100 people now. It's been amazing. And I can't wait for this year. I feel like this is this year. Uh, it took me years to learn how to play like myself. Maybe I'm finally playing like myself. Maybe this is the way to go. 75% of the people said that they'd rather train alone. That's, uh, hey, I'm look, I'm not knocking it. You guys can achieve goal. I know you can do it by yourself. But you don't have to. And if you don't want to, come join us. Come join us for a ride. Uh, we're going to have to figure out how to do this on a run too, guys. We got to we gotta integrate this more and we're going to build a platform of team and team unity and, uh, and going after it and achieving goals together. Um, you achieve the goals for yourself with the team, with the team support. I think that... You know, that could be our niche here, guys. And uh, and I think we're going to go for it. Uh, you know, it's been great. Those nine people that showed up last night for the ride, all you guys were awesome. And I look forward to building that and building all this other stuff in the future. And if you want to get involved on Zwift, give me, you know, give me a shout out. Let me know. I'll, I'll add you to the group. We're going to talk. I'm going to do a whole podcast on our Super Bowl pool for Team Ordinary. Uh, we'll do that probably midweek next week. Uh, but I, I know I told, I promised some of you guys I would explain it and I just, I didn't. So remember, uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm closing pretty abruptly. That's all right. I only got two minutes, but um, I don't know. I like where this is headed. I do. I really do. Uh, soup to nuts. Everyone involved. Keep at it. Keep working hard. It's uh, it's only January 10. Remember the, the rule of two weeks. Stick with it. If you're having trouble, stick with it. Join a group. Get involved. All that good stuff. And remember, every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys.